Here I am standing on Valley Road. I think it's Valley Road, maybe Valley Street, Valley Drive. I'm not exactly sure. But this is literally in downtown Lafayette. Don't believe me? Turn around. I'm just kidding. We're not actually that close to downtown. We're about 100 feet away from the hill that uh, we took that other shot from. But this is very, very close. When you go that way, just about 200 feet, you can see downtown and it's like, where in the world are we? Uh, this part of Lafayette has been one of my favorite roads for quite some time because it's just so tranquil and serene and calm. And if you didn't know it, you'd think you were in some mountain highway in the Pocono Mountains of Pennsylvania. But no, this is Lafayette, Indiana. Flat old middle Indiana. And the contrast is what I find to be really fascinating. Because going that way just a little bit, you end up downtown. Going here, you find yourself in this secluded, foresty kind of area. But if we head up the hill, just a little ways. You find yourself up here. Now it's 14th Street. It was 10th, then it became Valley, now it's 14th. And it's amazing, the contrasts. I mean, it's so tranquil and serene down there. You come up here, and I think 614 back here is the smallest house in all of Lafayette. But up here, the streets are straight, the houses are small, the trees are sparse. And this is what a lot of Lafayette looks like. But I'm just so amazed at the contrasts. From bustling downtown with the brick buildings multiple stories high, to the tree-lined street there with the houses secluded into the woods, to up here with the small houses, straight streets, kind of normal neighborhoods, Lafayette is a place of incredible contrasts, and this area here is some of the biggest contrasts. But there's more, <laughs> because if you just go a couple blocks to the west, you end up here. This is just off of 9th Street in an area called Highland Park. and. Something about this neighborhood makes me feel a little uncomfortable wearing my Star Wars t-shirt, but anyway, the idea that just fascinates me is the contrast between the different neighborhoods we have that are all so close to each other. And so I, I wonder, what's it like to live on the border? What's it like to live on the edge? What must it be like to be, say, in the richest house on the block, right next to the poorest house on the block? What must it be like to be living in the rundown house right next to a really ritzy house? It's those borders that make me wonder. You know, there's an interesting thing in the book of James. James, Jesus' half-brother, wrote a letter, and in the first chapter of that letter that we have in our New Testament, James says, the low person, the humble person, should take pride in his high position. That means James is talking about poor people. He's talking about poor people just like Jesus did, where Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. James says, the, the brother in humble circumstances or poor circumstances should take pride in his high position. And that just means that, you know, James is recognizing that poor people can have still a great standing before God. But the other half of James's sentence there is pretty scary. He says, and the person with wealth should take pride in his low circumstances. James is saying that rich people have a hard time entering the kingdom of God. That's what Jesus said. James is saying that rich people can have a difficult time with a relationship with God. And so the fascinating thing to me is that James, in his first chapter, he says this, the person who is poor has high standing before God, and the person who's rich has low standing before God. Now, James, I don't think he's saying that all rich people are not in good with God. I don't think James is saying that all poor people have a good relationship with God. James is doing something different. He's trying to remind us 
that all this earthly stuff, it's temporary, it's transitory, it's leaving, it's fleeting. And so if you're living in one of the poor houses right next door to a rich house, you might look at the rich people and feel a certain way towards them, and you might feel a certain way about yourself. If you're in one of the rich houses living right next door to a, a run-down house, you might feel a certain way about yourself. You might feel a certain way about those other people. But God wants us to reevaluate. God wants us to change our perspective. He doesn't want us to measure ourselves based on our wealth or our possessions or even the address on your house. He wants us to measure ourselves in relationship to Him. And so I'm asking you to join me in prayer today. Let's pray for our neighborhoods. Let's pray for our neighbors. Let's pray for the people who are on the borders, on the edges. The people who are living in the house that's less than their neighbors. Let's pray for the people who are living in the house that's better than their neighbors. Let's pray for the people who are thinking, I don't measure up. And let's pray for the other people who think, I've got it all. And let's pray for ourselves that we wouldn't let things like material possessions and greed and all those other things divide us. Let's be people of unity. And let's ask for God to bring unity in the midst of all the contrasts.